God is good. Comment below where you were watching from. It's Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, one of your favorite prophetic voices. I want to talk to you about how God is rolling away the reproach. God is rolling away the reproach. There is a cutting off. There is a rolling away. There is a undoing of the old. The Spirit of God is rolling away the reproach from your life. I have a word to share. Glory to God. So comment below where, where you were watching from. It's Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. Shaka Baba. Good to see many of you jumping on here. Sub Dr. Prophet Tarius, good to see you. Child of Most High. Melissa from Sunny Scottsdale. I need some sun in my life. What's up, Apostle Sheldon? Love you, man. Uh, Sue Sanchez, God bless you. Let's get the numbers up, my friends. Hello there, Heidi. London, Malagre, I got to see Venus. Flower Pink. Porterville, South Africa. Pakistan, Zindabad. Good to see you, Jax. Alex, good to see you, brother. Thanks so much for the hat, by the, for the gift, by the way. Mount Vernon, Indiana. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Continue to comment below where you're watching from. What's up, Rob? Hi there, Carolyn. Yes. Tanya from Albuquerque. Yeah, by the way, guys, next week, I will be in Tulsa and in Oklahoma City. So if you are in Oklahoma, come and see me. Come and meet me. I would love to see you next week in Tulsa and Oklahoma City. And the week after that, I'm going to be in Albuquerque and Gallup, New Mexico with Prophet Charlie Shamp and Steve Swanson. So come and see us. It's going to be some glorious times in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hi there, Nicolette. Good to see you. Sharabrakata. Hello there, Andy from Ohio. Thanks for being a subscriber, Andy. Amen. Likewise, Carolyn. Hello, Sonia from D.C. I will be D in the D.C. area uh, in the month of March. So look out for those dates. Thank you, Beverly. Soto. Hi there, Tanya. Thank you, Lord. Hello from Connecticut, I believe. Shakarata. Hi there, Brandon. We met at Pastor Benny's Gala. Wonderful. Prophetess Jovan from KC. God bless you. Keith Miller, good to see you. Michael from Arizona. Georgia, God bless. Oh, Ali. Al, silent man from New Mexico. I'm going to be in New Mexico in two weeks, so come and see me. Montreal, Canada. I'm here on the other side in Vancouver, Canada. And I'm leaving tonight, going back home. Bishop Anthony from Philippines, God bless. South Africa in the house, Oklahoma City. All right, Edward, did you know I'm going to be in OK City next week? Come and see me. Sherelle from Trinidad. Wonderful, Al Silent Man. We're going to be in Albuquerque and Gallup. Oh, Elaine from Albuquerque. Look at that. New Mexico strong here today. Botswana. Thanks, Joe Steele. Glory to God. What's up, Jay Carlos? Shara Barakata. Zabarabara. Well, friends, God bless you. Good to see you. We've had some great times here in Vancouver, Canada. And fun fact about me, Vancouver, Canada 
it was like a second home for me for a number of years. Vancouver was one of my circuit stomping grounds. The Lord met me many years ago here. I have friends back to 10 years, pretty much when I started as a whippersnapper. When I first started off in the prophetic and in the charismatic movement, uh, a lot of my friends here in Vancouver, Canada area uh, was around me. And I would come to Vancouver maybe three, four times a year. And that was uh, for a few years time. But uh, I'm happy to be back and uh, in the great north. And the Lord has been moving wonderfully the last two days. Amen. And uh, tonight I'm going back home to L.A., uh, Ontario, Canada. God bless you. New Zealand, God bless you. Tonight I'll be going back home to L.A. I'll be at Open Heavens World on Sunday. Like I said, this coming week, I'll be in Tulsa and Oklahoma City. So please come and do see me if you are in that area, in that region. The week after that, we will be in Gallup and Albuquerque, New Mexico. Amen. Summer shot, hallelujah. Well, give me some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall, friends. Today, I want to talk about the rolling away of the reproach. God is rolling away the reproach. Amen. And I woke up and I felt this word in my spirit. And I believe God is about to circumcise our hearts. He's about to cut away the old things. He's about to cut off the things that do not matter. The things of the old, the things that are dead. There is a cutting away. There is a tearing off. There is a painful separation. And wow, today's the 21st day. This is our last day of consecration. Many of you, Shaka Rabba, have joined 21 days of consecration with me and our ministry. So I want to say God bless you. And we salute you. Amen. But today on the 21st day, 21, which is three times seven, triple seven, triple perfection, triple completion, triple holiness. Seven means completion, perfection, and holiness. Today on January 21st, as many of us are finishing our 21 days of consecration, there is a triple completion, triple perfection, triple gold, triple glory. Ikarabata. There is a triple finishing work, a triple finishing anointing that's coming over you. So well done, good and faithful servants of the Lord. But today, I want to talk about how God is rolling away the reproach. Here in Joshua chapter 5, haha, Joshua 5, the Bible here says, Glory to God. The Bible here says, in verse 2, At the time the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelites at Gibeath Haraloth. Now why is this important? Because before the Israelites crossed over. They stopped at a place called Gilgal. Now Gilgal, it is a place right before you step into the promised land. And I believe many of us were about to step into a launching for the rest of this year. Many of us were about to step into the realm of a launching and breakthrough for 2023, but before we cross over, may we come to this moment of Gilgal where we decide and choose to circumcise our hearts, to cut away the old things, to separate ourselves from old mindsets and attitudes because you are stepping into a new season and a new realm and a new glory. If you believe it, say amen. Now, why did they have to circumcise themselves again? 
because the Bible says there were some who were born in the wilderness. And as some were born in the wilderness, they did not circumcise themselves before they left Egypt. Who here knows that you need to cut off every tie? You need to break every tie. Who here knows that you cannot have any mixture, any tie, any soul ties? You cannot have anything in common with the enemy. So before they left Egypt, the Israelites had to be circumcised. Now they're stuck in the wilderness for 40 years. And there's a whole new generation of boys that were not circumcised. And the Lord said, before you cross over, you need to check yourself. Before you cross over, you need to make a covenant with me. Before you cross over, before you leave your wilderness, who am I talking to? Before you leave the old behind, you need to go back to your first love. Go back to what I've commanded and instructed you to do. Before you cross over and before you pass over, you need to circumcise your hearts. And so the generation of boys that were not circumcised in Egypt, but they were born and raised in the 40 years in the wilderness, God says, enough is enough. It's time to cut off the old. Enough is enough. It's time to break every tie with your false identity. It's time to break away from that denomination, from those false covenants, those false alignments, from those wolves in sheep clothing. It's time for you to break ties with the old. Here in verse nine, glory to God. Here in verse nine, Joshua five, nine. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place was called Gilgal to this day. Now Gilgal, it means to roll. I want to say roll. God is about to roll away like a carpet. God is about to roll away like a garment, like an old mantle that you roll away. God's about to roll away the reproach of Egypt. Now, why is this so important? Because Egypt stands for hell. Egypt stands for the kingdom of darkness. It stands for the Egyptian ways. It stands for the old nature, the flesh, the Adamic nature. It stands for the sinful nature of man that we were born into. We have fallen into. And God is saying, I'm going to roll it away. I'm going to roll it away from your life. And I'm going to put it away. The reproach of Egypt. I want you to think about this. That word reproach, it means disappointment. Have you been disappointed? Have there been some discouragements, some letdowns? Some areas where there were breaches of trust or breaches in the spirit. Some people let you down. Some things were let down. There was reproach. There was discouragement. There was failure, disappointment. There were criticism. There was disapproval. People tried to come against you. That reproach of Egypt is being rolled away. Now I'm prophesying to you because before you step into your promised land, before you step into your Passover, before you cross over, you need to cut away the old. And I declare and I decree over you, you are cutting off the old. Get ready to move. Get ready to move up to the next level. 
Get ready to move through into the new realm. Enough is enough. Those 40 years will no longer identify you. Those 40 years is not your portion. Those 40 years of struggling in the wilderness, your ties, your connection with Egypt, that is no longer your portion. That is no longer who you are. Cut it off, rip it off. It's being rolled away. The Lord is putting it away. And God is saying, put aside your childish ways. Put aside your ways of the flesh. The Bible says set aside everything that comes in between, that causes you to stumble, causes you to be slow. Put it away and run this marathon and run your race. Hallelujah, the race that has been set before you. I'm declaring over you now that today on January 21st, as many of us, we are completing our 21 days of consecration. I'm declaring over you now that even as we are about to finish this month of January, do you believe it? January went just like that. And I know we still got about a week left. But to me, it's already over. But the Lord is saying, I will end this month with miracles, signs, and wonders. Get ready for God to finish off this month with great miracles in your life. He's going to end this month of January with miracles, signs, and wonders. If you believe it, say amen. Now, why is this Gilgal moment so important? Chew. Because this moment will determine your future. Hear me now. A moment will determine a movement. And this moment can determine your future. Are you going to stay stuck to your past? Are you going to stay married to the abuser? Are you going to be one with the enemy spirits? Or are you going to cut ties? Set yourself apart, be separated, and say enough is enough. Shokorototo. This moment will determine your future. This moment can become a movement. And I want to declare over you that many of you watching right now, God is saying, don't let this kill gal moment pass you by. Because this moment, yeah, it's going to be painful. It's not going to be easy. A flint knife. It's not the best doctors, not the best scientists, not the best hospitals. You don't have the best technology. This is going to be real and raw. But if you can endure the pain, if you can endure the circumcision of the flesh, Kora Katarabrata, if you can pass through the pain and the struggle of your body, then the Lord is saying, then will you be able to cross over? Then will you be able to move forward? You see, it's not easy. It's not easy to let go of some good things. Who here knows that the enemy of the great is good? It's okay to love all the good things in your life, but I want great. So God is saying, he's about to deal with the hard things. He's about to deal with the difficult places. There is a cutting away anointing. There is a cutting off anointing because he does not want anything of Egypt on you, in you, over you, and around you. Egypt will no longer be your portion. Egypt will no longer be your portion. I want to prophesy. They died off in the wilderness because they complained. Oh, send us back to Egypt. At least there's quail. At least there's meat. At least there's food. God is saying, daughter, son, 
the food of the next season is going to be greater than the food of your last season. What you eat in the next season is going to be greater than what you left. Are you hearing me? Greater glory, greater delicacies, greater pantries, greater plates, greater banquets, tables of feasting, whining and dining. The Lord is saying, if you can trust me and do the hard thing, if you can trust me and do the difficult thing, then I will give you better, greater, and I will give you newer, says God. Today, he has rolled away the reproach. He's rolling away the reproach. He is rolling away the reproach from your life. Any disappointment, any discouragement, any harassment, any letdowns, it's being rolled away and off of your life in Jesus' name. Some would say he's rolling it away. He's rolling it away. Thank you, Lord. This moment of Gilgal is so important because you and I, we are about to cross over. Do you believe it? You're about to cross over, my friends. Some would say I'm crossing over. Now, I believe there's, there is something significant to this rolling. Rolling, 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 rolling. So I'm just looking at the commentaries because the Bible, the word is very specific when it comes to words. Sharabata. And that word, that word roll away in the Hebrew is galal. Some would say galal. And galal means to take away or to roll away. Galal. And it's used like when they rolled a stone away. How heavy is a stone? Genesis 29 verse 3. They would roll the stone. How heavy has a stone been in your life? The stones in your heart. The stones. Remember the stone was the door to the tomb of the Jewish people. If you were rich and prosperous in those days, your tomb was in the side of a rock or in the side of a mountain. So they rolled the stone away from the tomb of Jesus. So I believe God is releasing a galal, G-A-L-A-L, -A, -L, a rolling stone anointing. How heavy is that stone? Now catch this. The stone in the days of Jesus, Yeshua, I'm sure you've seen it in the movies, but the stone which was the door that kept shut the tomb of Jesus. That door had, had ropes, had guards. My goodness, I'm preaching right now. <clears throat> had ropes, had guards, and it even had the mark of the king on the wax as a sign. God is saying, I'm sending angels to roll the stone away. The heavy stone. In Joshua 10, 18, it says the large stones, the great stones. God is about to roll away the stones. So in the same way that God is rolling away the heavy, impossible, immovable stones, so that you can come out of your tomb 
In the same way, God is rolling away the stones. He is also rolling away your reproach, your disappointment, your discouragement. Someone say, God's rolling it away. My goodness, who would have known that Jesus was the first rolling stone? Joshua 5, 9. Then the Lord said to Yahshua, Today, say today, I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. I want to talk to you. If you're receiving today, say amen. Good to see you, Ambassador Charlotte. This is my usual time of when I come on Clubhouse, but I didn't have enough time to commit to that today. But I want to talk to you today. Here, the Bible says, Today, I've rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal. I want to talk to you. The very place received a new name because of what took place. I hope you follow me. The very place received a new name, received a new glory, received a new anointing. The very definition, the very idea, the very place became a new place because of what God did there. I need you to throw a shoe right now. Good to see you, Shannon. Did you catch that? When you make history with God, the name of that place will change. When you make history with the Lord, the name of that place will change. And not only that, hear me, but that place will now become so different that now that realm and that anointing that you experience will forever be there. Who's ready for a new name? Who's ready for a new glory? The Bible says today, I've rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Now that place was called Gilgal. Someone say preach. You see that became a prophetic place that now every single person who stepped into Gilgal, they stepped into the realm and the anointing of the rolling away anointing. When you make the hard choice, when you make the hard decision, when you do what's difficult, make a sacrifice, sow a sacrificial seed. When you do what nobody else wants to do, when you make history with God, then the very place which your feet is under, that place becomes converted. That place becomes transformed. That place goes up in value. That place gets transfigured. It receives a new name because of the history you made with God. Someone say preach. That place was also called Gilgal, which now means every single place, excuse me, every single person who stepped into Gilgal, they also experienced the rolling away anointing. I want to talk to you. Because you paid a price, others will benefit from that price that you paid. Because you, as a pioneer, you as a forerunner, because you did what was difficult, those who are coming after you, your children, your children's children, the generation that you represent, because you did what was difficult, those who are coming up after you will also receive that grace. Somebody say, I'm tapping in. When you make the hard decision, then the Lord will also honor what was done. And that same grace, realm, revelation, will remain in that land. Some would say it's mine. And that's why many of our children, 
take the glory of God for granted. We take the beauty of America for granted. We take these things for granted because we've been around it. We treat it like it's familiar. We treat it like it's just another. But God is saying, daughter, son, this day I want to cut away the reproach of Egypt. The identity, the baggage, the discouragement, disappointments, the curses. He wants to cut those things away from you so that you can cross over and pass over. Are you ready to cross over? Today on January 21st, 2023, I declare and I decree a crossing over anointing. But first, there must be a cutting away anointing. Someone say snip, snip. The Lord knows how to cut every false tie with witches, sorcerers, poverty with Egypt. The Lord knows how to cut you free. And I declare and I decree right now. Good to see you, Becky. I declare and I decree right now that the spirit of the Lord is about to make a clean cut. Someone say clean cut. There's going to be a clean cut. It's not going to be filled with anxiety. Good to see Evangelist Colby. It's not going to be filled with anxiety. It's not going to be filled with difficulty going back and forth, wondering if he did the right thing or not. It's going to be a clean cut. Someone say clean cut. Today, I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you so that the place is now called Gilgal, a rolling away anointing. There's three anointings being released on this broadcast and from this passage. Number one, a cutting away anointing. Number two, a rolling away anointing. And number three, a new name anointing. Whatever, and I, I want to say this, every area you have a clean cut, like my hair. Come on, so but every area you cut, the every area you cut will become the area of a new name. I need you to slap your neighbor, I'm telling you. Every area that is cut will deem and gain and receive a new name. Every area that is cut, you will receive a new name. You know, I struggle with impurity. So because I cut the old flesh in the area of impurity, now I'm receiving a new name of pure. Because I struggled with poverty and I cut that area of Egyptian poverty, now I am receiving the new name of prosperous in that area. Come on, somebody. God is giving you a new name. Egypt will no longer define you. The old season will no longer define you. Someone say hallelujah. Before we move any further, friends, let us circumcise our hearts. Today on this day, January 21st, as it's the last day of many of our consecrations, I want to once again salute you and bless you if you finished your 21 days of consecration. I'm sure the Lord is speaking to some of you to keep going or keep, keep this type of lifestyle ongoing. But let me tell you, friends, the Lord 
on this 21st day, in this Gilgal moment, he's saying, make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. Because there's a generation, hear me now, there's a generation of believers, of ministers. There's a generation of so-called prophets and apostles on Facebook and social media. There's a generation of self-proclaimed and self-appointed ministers. There's a generation of those that have not cut themselves in the body and have not marked themselves with covenant. There is a generation of those who did not circumcise their flesh before they left Egypt. There's a generation of those. And God is saying, before you cross over, you need to cut over. If you're with me today, say amen, give me some hearts and likes. The Bible says, Joshua chapter five, huh, verse eight, after the whole nation had been circumcised, they remained where they were in camp until they were healed. The whole nation was circumcised. <laughs> what a painful sight to try to behold. The whole nation had been circumcised and they remained where they were in camp until they were healed. Do you know what that means? Don't leave that place until you receive the promise from the Father on high. Do not leave Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Do not leave that place. Do not leave your man of God you're a woman of God. Do not leave this place of faith until you receive the double portion anointing. Do not leave this place until you're fully healed. And today is triple completion, triple seven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I declare now, you're crossing over. You're crossing over. You're stepping into the new. And you're stepping into the more. Some would say I'm crossing over. Friends, it's still a new year. There's still time for you to start your year off right with Jesus. I wanna encourage you and I wanna invite you to fully give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not too late. This year is still new and this year still belongs to Jesus. Do the right thing. Do what's hard. Make those goals resolutions in the Lord and see what the Lord does in your life. I pray that God will roll away the reproach of Egypt. He's rolled it away, away from your life, away from your family, away from your ministry. He's rolled it away in a mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it and receive it, say amen. Glory be to God. Thank you for watching, friends. Shabbat Shalom. I'm glad I could see you and just jump on and say hello and share this word with you that was bubbling from my spirit. If you are blessed, please consider sharing. Give this page a like and a follow. Obviously, Facebook has really been controlling the algorithms and lowering our numbers, but all is well. Amen.
Continue to share this on your wall. Give us a like and a follow. Prayerfully consider being a subscriber to our Facebook page or a donor, monthly partner with Benlam Ministries. And uh, I can't wait to see you next week in Tulsa and in Oklahoma City. And the week right after that, I'll be in Gallup and Albuquerque, New Mexico. Right after that, I will be in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. But friends, get ready to cross over. This is a Gilgal moment. So break and cut ties with all falsivities. And may you step into the new and into the glory of all that God has for you. Amen. Who's ready for a new name? Thank you, Yvonne Guy, for being a subscriber. Do consider following me on this page. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And we can't wait to see you very soon. God bless you, friends. Ciao. Happy January. Hag Sameach. Shabbat Shalom. And I will see you tomorrow, Sunday, at Open Heavens World in Southern California. God bless.